<laughs> Hello everyone. We are here. We're about to do our scary stories or ghost stories. But instead of ghost stories today, we're going to read loose books. Okay. Okay. I got to go get some coffee. It's early in the morning. This video will not be coming out till later on in the afternoon because I got to go to work. But it will be uploaded soon. <clears throat> All right. So let me pause and go get some coffee. Okay. The title of the book we are reading is called Trick or Trapped. Readers beware, you choose the scare. Oh, okay. This is the beginning. Sorry. <clears throat> Guess what? It's Halloween and you're going trick-or-treating, so grab some white face paint, a black cape, and a set of fake fangs, then get changed into your vampire costume. And don't forget to bring a bag for all that candy you're about to collect. Use a pad and pencil to write down whatever you collect in the book, and be sure to write down everything... <sighs> Pat in a pen. <coughs> Back. And make sure to write down everything, some of everything. Some of your goodies might mean the difference between life and death. This scary adventure is all about you. You decide what will happen, and you decide how terrifying the scares, the scares will be. Start on page one and follow the instructions at the bottom of each page. You make the choices. If you choose well, you'll make it home again. But if you make the wrong decision, beware. So take a deep breath, cross your fingers, and turn to page one to give yourself goosebumps. All right. Page one. Finally, you breathe a sigh of relief. Your front door slams shut behind you. You thought you'd never get out. What an evening. First, your mother made you finish all your chores. Then your dad ordered you to do your math homework. To top it off, your sister's white poodle bit you on the leg. Then when you complained, your mom yelled at you. But now you're running down the sidewalk carrying your trick-or-treat bag. It's just a few hours. It'll be filled with to the brim with candy. Halloween. You think with a grin? My kind of holiday. Yeah. You catch a reflection in front of a windshield of your dad's car. Yes, your vampire costume looks great. I have come to suck your blood. You shout. Then you tear off to meet your three best buddies on Pearl Street. This is going to be your most awesome Halloween ever. All right. You take a shortcut that leads you into a wide lane directly in front of you. You see a right arm gate. Behind it, in the distance, is an absolute enormous white mansion. In front of the mansion, blocking an entrance to it. Sit five homes in a row, each one a different color. Red, blue, orange, yellow, green. Weird. You've never noticed this place before. It's Sunshine Court. Someone says in your ear, you wheel around, standing behind you as Nathan Rickles, <clears throat> the nerdiest, klutziest guy in your class. Just one look at him makes you remember the time... His shorts caught on fire in the science lab. <clears throat> it takes all of your concentration to keep from laughing. What's Sunshine Court, you ask? Candy Central. 
Nathan exclaims, cleaning the glasses he wears over his zombie costume. Trick-or-treating paradise. A caramel-coated jackpot. You sigh, remembering Nathan's tendency to repeat the same information ten different ways. Well, enjoy it, you say. I have to meet some people, but Nathan grabs you not so fast. Nathan holds a bag up to your nose. Look what I got in there, he says. You peer inside the bag. Whoa, it's filled to the brim with candy. All that came from five houses. Six, including the white mansion, Nathan replies. You have to get to the white mansion. It's the best, the greatest, the okay, you say. I get the point. You stare through the heavy iron gates. Hmm, your friends are waiting for you on the Pearl Street. But how long could it take to visit five homes and a mansion? Here, Nathan says, take something to get you started. He places a double chocolate triple caramel delight in your bag. Wow, Nathan, you say. That's my favorite. Thanks. No problem, he replies. Go on in and don't forget the white mansion. Nathan runs off down the street. You turn to the right iron gate. It is locked, you wonder. You push it. It swings open. Well, you say to yourself, Candy, here I come. You sprint towards the houses, clink. Your wheel around the iron gates have shut behind you. You pull on them. Hey, they won't budge. Are they locked? If they are, how will you ever get out of here? The iron fence circles the whole sunshine court. For a second, you're a little spooked. Everything is eerily still. What was that? Did something move in the shadows? You glance around. The grass here is perfectly mowed. Birds are singing in the trees. It looks just like the kind of neighborhood your parents would live, love to live in. <gasps> Stop being a jerk, a dope. You should scold yourself. There's nothing to be afraid of. The wind blew the gate shut, and someone in one of these houses will let you out. So get in there and trick or treat. <clears throat> the cobblestone walk you are standing on splits into five directions, each leading to one of the five different colored homes. Which one should you choose first? Well, I'm going to the orange house. So, page 63 it is. Got it. Up close, the orange house looks more like a shack. You sure don't expect such a run-down dump to have a lot in the way of candy. But you figure it's worth a try. Knock, knock, knock. Trick or treat, you call. You wait and wait, nothing. Knock, 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 trick or treat, you shriek. Again you wait, a light breeze rustles through the wind chime, and eerie bells fill the e early evening air. That's it. You're out of here. You turn to go, creak. You glance over your shoulder. The rickety wood door swings open by itself. You swallowed hard. What's there, a ghost or something? Greetings, a creepy voice cries from inside the darkened house. What is it you want? <clears throat> you try to reply with your voice, catches in your throat. Come, child, what is it you want? I am a busy man, a figure steps from the shadows. And you see a short, squat man wearing a white lab coat. He has a huge handlebar mustache, and he wears a purple necktie that dangles to his knees. Dr. Helen Thorbin's the name he introduced himself. Uh, trick or treat, you say shyly. Dr. Hith Helen Thorbin. Narrows his eyes at you. I know why you're here, he exclaims. 
Dr. Gildenbithen sent you to steal my experiments. I knew it. Wait, you say. I've never heard of it. Before you can finish, the doctor wheels around. Samson, he cries. In an instant, an enormous gorilla fills the entire doorway. A wave of fear rushes over you. Bring the child inside, Samson. We got to go to page six. You kick and claw, you scream at the top of your lungs, but the gorilla has you locked tight in his arms. He carries you down a twisting hallway. You glance in the rooms to the left and right and gasp. In one room, a group of mummies plays cards. In the next are two men playing ping pong, but neither of them had heads. <laughs> the doctor notices the look of fear on your face. Just some of my experience. He, experiments, he exclaims. Samson carries you into a giant laboratory and plops you down on an operating table. Operating table? Are you about to become one of the doctor's experiments? Let me go, you cry. But Samson simply ties you to the table. Finally, the doctor cries, the perfect child to use in my latest experiment. Oh no, you can't even imagine what that means. You scream and try to kick but you can't move your legs. You're not entirely out of luck, though. Right next to your hand, left hand is a lever. If you use it, maybe you can escape. You can either push it away or pull it towards you. Where are we going? I think we're going to push it away. Or, no, we're going to pull it towards us. We're going to go to 107. You pull the lever, the table begins to shake. Then, whoa, the table you're laying on plunges through a hole in the floor. Above, you see the doctor peering down at you, his face growing smaller and smaller. Wham, you touch down in a hall lined with mirrors. Soon, the hall forks off in two different directions. You have to choose which way to go. Oh, man, this is some kind of mirror maze. You hate mazes. You pause for a moment. Which way do you go? What's that? Footsteps echoing in the hall coming towards you. Who can that be? Only the doctor or Samson, trembling with fear, you turn and tear down the left hallway. The footsteps grow louder. You don't dare stop running. If you do... The doctor will drag you back to the lab. Then who knows what will happen. You hear the doctor's voice. Running is no use. I'll find you. You sprint towards a light at the end of the hall. No, you've reached a dead end. Wait, not a dead end. On the other side of you are there are two brass doors. On the other side of you, there are two brass doors. Take the door on the right or take the door on the left. I want the right. So we're going to page 17. The right door looks good. You throw it open. The room is totally dark. You see the dim outline of something strange on the table. You squint and gasp at what you see. A room of heads lying in a row on a table. Another one of the doctor's weird experiments. Gross, you're out of here. You reach for the door, slam, it shuts in your face, click, it locks. You pull at the doorknob. No! You howl with fear, let me go! Ha ha ha, someone laughs. But aren't you alone in the room? You turn toward the table. No, it can't be. The heads, they're alive. And they're laughing. Ha ha ha. Your head throbs with 
the unearthly sound, the laughter. It's killing you. Ha, ha, ha. When you hit your knees and hold your ears, no. Looks like your trick-or-treating adventure is over. But start again on page one, and maybe you'll have a better idea of how to get ahead in this game. Dang. We ended the book. All right. Start all over again. Page one. Page two. Page three. Then page four. Okay. So not the orange house. Let's go to the red house. <clears throat> the red house looks nice, you decide. You jog up to it then ring the bell. The door swings open and standing before you is Santa Claus. Ho, 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 the bellow. He bellows. Merry Christmas. Christmas. This guy needs some serious holiday help. Uh, yeah, you say, Merry Christmas to you, too. A tall woman dressed as a werewolf appears at Santa's side. We need more punch, she squawks. More punch. He laugh. Santa laughs, and the party's just begun. Your eyes go wide. Oh, it's a costume party. As the werewolf retreats into the house, you see Santa reach into his red sack. When he faces you again, he's holding a piece of red licorice and a mango lollipop in one hand, and a shiny red apple in the other. Take one, he commands, then come join the fun. Okay. So we either have to choose the licorice, the lollipop, or the apple. I want the lollipop. And it said to write down what we chose and go to page 69. <clears throat> All right. You step into the house and find yourself inside a giant ballroom filled with monsters, witches, and vampires. Great costumes, you think. They look totally real. A shiver runs through you. It's silly, you know, but part of you thinks that maybe they look a little too real. Hey, you have your candy. Maybe you should just get out of here. You turn and find your path blocked by two elves. Not real elves. You reason. Kids in costumes. Then you notice the elves' hands. They have knived edge claws at the ends of their fingers. Whoa. Those aren't like any elf costumes you've ever seen. Where are you going? The first elf demands. His voice is low and gravelly, not like the kids at all. He grabs your cape with one of his claws. Rip. Whoa. The claws are tearing holes in your cape. You gasp. Does that mean they're real? The party just starting. The party's just starting, the second elf growls. Have a drink, the first elf offers. Hands out a frothy glass of punch. No, the second elf cries, grabbing you. Follow me. This house is huge. There's so much to see. Are we grabbing the punch or are we going with him? Um, I'm going to take the punch. <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm not going with the other guy. I don't know him. and I'm a kid. So we're going to grab the punch. You try the punch. As long as these elves leave you alone, you drain the glass, then glance around the party. The dance floor is a sea of movement. People seem to be having fun, but you're eager to go trick-or-treating. Someone taps your shoulder. A shriveled goblin stands at your side. Its face is covered with warts. Its skin is light green, and its ears flop over like a 
like a dog's gross. Want to dance, the goblin asks. Gee, you stammer, I'd like to, but... Get away, a ghost floats over to the goblin. I've always wanted to dance with a vampire, it proclaims. The ghost hovers in front of you, about two feet off the ground. Yikes. You swallow hard. That's either a real ghost or the best costume you've ever seen. Either way, it's totally time to go. You take a step towards the door, but the goblin grabs your wrist, and the ghost wraps itself around your legs. You can't move. Looks like you're going to have to dance with one of them. Choose. Um, the ghost. We're going to dance with the ghost. It was 25. All right. You pick the ghost. And wow, you are dancing. Actually, you think this is fun. The ghost is a great partner. Talk about light on your feet. You flip the ghost into the air, the crowd claps. But as the ghost comes down, the room goes quiet, dead quiet. What's going on? You glance around and see a huge man in a pirate costume looming over you. He has three black teeth and a bandana around his neck. What are you doing with my ghostie? Hoop me, Hardy, he demands. His breath smells like a year-old garage. Just dancing, you mange to squeak. Dancing, eh? He draws his sword and presses the, the blade to your neck. It slices a small hole in your collar. Hey, isn't this guy taking his pirate thing a bit too far? No one dances with me ghosty. Unless you can pay the price for your dance. The price? What price? You'd pay anything to get away from his lunatic. From this lunatic. He loves apples, the, guest, the ghost tells you. Give him one quickly. No, I didn't take the apple from Santa. So now I have to go to page 35. You go. I, you don't have an apple. I, I, you stutter. If I can't pay the price, the pirate cry. If you can't pay the price, the pirate cries, you'll have to pay with your life. He pushes you to the floor. The sword flashes through the air. You prepare to feel the blade slice you in two, but the ghost speaks up. Stop. You gulp. The sword is an inch from the stomach. The sword is an inch from your stomach. What is it? The pirate growls. Give the vampire a fair fight, the ghost says. Fair fight, the pirate cries. The ghost pulls you up. Someone dressed as one of the three musketeers hands you a sword. The pirate frowns. All right, me hearty. You got your sword. Now stand up so I can rip out your guts. What? You don't have... You don't know how to sword fight. Listen, you say. I'm no good with... Prepare to be skewered, pirate bellows. On shaky legs, you raise your feet. You want to be brave and fight, but maybe... It would be smarter to run for your life. I'm going to run. So we're going to 51. Okay, we got to pause and I got to do something real quick. Okay, we got that done real quick. Let's finish this real fast. Or try to finish it. Okay, there's no time to be a hero. You throw down the sword and cut through the crowd. You can hear the pirate's footsteps right behind you. At any second, the sword may cut you in two. You turn a corner and spy a door. Quickly, you yank it open and duck into the dark room. A wave of relief washes over you safe, but then you hear a rustling sound. Someone's in the room with you. You feel along the wall and flip the light switch. What two vampires standing over an open coffin? You gasp and take a step back. Get real, you tell yourself. They're just two guys dressed up for Halloween like you. 
Then the first vampire smiles, showing off a pair of six-inch six fangs. They look like they're dripping with blood. You're frozen, too terrified to say a word, but then you burst out. A pirate is trying to kill me. The vampires exchange a glance. Then the second one smiles. Well, we'd be glad to help. Do you have a mango lollipop? I do have a lollipop, so let's go to page 83. You reach into your bag and grab out the lollipop. Here you cry. Take it. Now help me, please. Outside, you hear the pirate's fist pound on the door. I know you're in there, me hearty. Open up. My heart is racing. A bloody, a bloodthirsty pirate behind you. Vampires in front of you. One of the vampires grabs you roughly within human strength. He picks you up and slams you onto the empty, into the empty coffin. You want to live, he asks. Lie down in there. Lie down in a coffin? That's for dead people. The pirate bangs his body against the door once, twice, a few more, tries, and he'll break it down. Don't be a fool, the other vampire says with a grin that exposes his fangs. Lie down. <clears throat> Slam, the coffin door shuts on top of you. It's pitch black inside. You hear the pirate crash through the door. Where's the little one? The kid went off. Went out the back, one vampire replays. Incredible, you think? The vampire covered for you. You hear the heavy steps of the pirate as he reaches, races out the back door. Okay, open up, you call. Rapping on the coffin lid, but you don't hear a sound. You feel a twinge of panic and pound the top of the coffin again. It's hot in here, you cry. Open up. Still nothing. What's going on? Are the vampires going to leave you there? Bottom of the coffin drops out from under you. Ah, uh, you're creaning down the, a slide. Then you shout out into the air. From, you land on the middle of a pile of pillows. What just happened? You shake your head and look around. Yes, in front of you is a, cobble, is a cobblestone path, and it's leading to the white mansion. Maybe there's someone in there who can help you get out of this freaky place. The white mansion rises up before you. You only hope to get out of this place, except now that you're closer to it, you're not so sure you want to go in. At close range, it looks a little unfriendly. But what choice do you have? The tall iron fence around sunset Sunshine Court is locked. Maybe the people in the big white mansion have a key. You have to give it a try. <clears throat> After everything that's just happened to you, your legs feel a bit weak with fear, but you walk up to the cobblestone path to the front door and ring the bell. Who will answer the door, you wonder? Horrible thoughts fill your head. You imagine a werewolf with razor-sharp teeth or a zombie who will rip your head off or the doors open. You blink. There's no well werewolf, no monster. Standing before you is the last person you ever expected to see. It's your classmate, Nathan. Nathan, you exclaim, what are you doing here? Nathan smiles. This is where I live. I'd like to show you around. There's lots to see, tons to do. You can't believe it. You're safe. You think of your buddies on Pearl Street. Once Nathan lets you out, you may still be able to catch them if you run the whole way. Dude, you say to Nathan, this is one weird place you live in. I'd like to hang out and talk about it, but maybe some other time. Right now, could you just let me out of here? So soon, Nathan says, adjusting his glasses. Stick around. My dad's out of town, and the butler just gave me the key to the back kitchen where we keep all the candy. Nathan dangles the key in front of your face. You remember the giant bag of sweets he showed you earlier in the evening, including a double chocolate chip of caramel delight bar. True, you're eager to catch up with your friends, but the thought of all that candy is too big of a temptation. All right, you say, let's hit the candy stash. Nathan. 
Nathan leads you through a marble foyer and past the living room as a big, as big as a basketball court too. An elevator. You never knew Nathan's family was this loaded. It's a fun little house, Nathan tells you as you ride up. We got everything, a swimming pool, a gym, a music room, even a game with the bumper cars. The elevator dings. Ah, we are here. Fourth floor. He scurries down a wide hallway, then stops and giggles at a nerdy way of his. He pushes the door open to a dark room. Come in, he cries. You hesitate a moment, then follow him in. Okay, you say in the darkness, where's the candy? Slams the door shut, clicks it locked, and then you hear a terrifying roar. Uh-oh. We gotta go to 118. Nathan flicks on the light. You are in a lab, an enormous room filled with strange gadgets, smoking potions, and frothing test tubes. And in the back, in a cage, is something positively hideous. He's a giant monster, half lion, you think, half man. He is covered with thick, bristly fur. He has giant yellow eyes and teeth that make jaws look like a wimp. He roars again, meet the thing. Nathan yells. He pushes you towards the center of the room. I made him in a spare t in my spare time. You made him? You ask, beginning to shake. That's right, Nathan says. He's ten feet tall. He weighs five hundred pounds. And boy, oh boy, does he love to eat. Really? You stammer as the thing's thing roars again. Really, Nathan declares. And there's something else about the thing that you need to know. Something very important. Okay, we are going to have to end this here. <clears throat> um, if you did enjoy this video, please smash that like button so we know that you liked it. Turn on the notification bell so you never miss another video. Subscribe if you're not already. Subscribe. And we will finish this story in two days. Tomorrow is going to be... Er, <coughs> In three days. I'm sorry. We'll finish this story in three days. We will come back and finish this story in three days. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Happy Vlogoween Day 24. And like I said, love you. Bye.